This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. I know this is the case pretty much every year, but a fantastic sports weekend once again. I know that with the with the Masters, it seems like every year is going to be a good year to watch some sports. But I feel like this year especially, maybe it's because I'm expecting rain and expecting it to be kind of bad. It wound up being a lot of fun. A good duel between John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, Phil Mickelson making a run on Sunday as well. And John Rahm coming out victorious. And of course, a good sports weekend always enhanced or sometimes enhanced with some winning bets. Uh, Brandon Gadula talking about John Rom here on the show last week. That certainly helped. I uh, did well with some NASCAR stuff too. So it's a good weekend in general for sports, but it was nice to have some winning bets on top of it. We're going to go recap last week later on today, but also talk about some Major League Baseball bets for Monday to try to get your week off to a good start and try to duplicate how things went last week. Welcome on into covering the spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire. Here to take a look at Monday's slate of uh, MLB Breaking down uh, some strikeout props and home run props like for today to let you know where I'm seeing value. And as mentioned, we'll recap last week here on the show as well uh, to go through an accountability section what we had here. And again, good week for the show overall. We'll talk about that here in a second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about the NBA play-in tournament. Break down that. Talk about where we can find some value there. we got NFL draft coverage coming up. We still have, of course, the NHL playoffs, the NBA playoffs, all that stuff will be covered here on the show. So to get all these shows as they go live to make sure you're getting the best odds, make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there is no better place to get in on the MLB action than at FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. So don't miss your chance to get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Must be 21-plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or the ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9 with it. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. In Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now, let's dig into MLB for today. And typically what we'll do here on this stream is we'll talk about money lines, strikeout props, and home runs. I would love to talk about money lines for today. The problem is when I look at the uh, the markets for today at FanDuel Sportsbook, I am seeing literally not a single one that I want to bet. There is one game where I am showing enough value. It crosses the value threshold for me for betting it based on my process and based on my model. And that game is for the Rangers and the Royals. Uh, the Rangers money line in that game, minus 172. But I think my model might be too high at Andrew Heaney. Uh, he really struggled in his first start. Seems like maybe not the pitcher he was last year. At least based on that, it can be a small sample. Maybe there's a bounce back here for sure. Maybe that means they're at a discount, et cetera, et cetera. But if he is dropping off, it's going to take my numbers uh, more than one start to catch up. So I do show value there. I'm not taking it myself. I'm not recommending it. Uh, but I think that that's a key thing with having a model, have, being a numbers-based thing is watching these games and identifying, is there a reason to be concerned? And I, you know, watching Heaney last week, I had, I don't know if I had a strikeout prop or the Rangers money line, but 
didn't look great. So we know he has the hard contact concerns too. So I'm showing value there. I'm not taking it personally and I'm going to pass. So I'd recommend you do the same there. Let's do something, uh, see more reason to be high in Heaney that I do not see. There are some strikeout props I like though. Um, and my favorite one is an under on three and a half. And typically you want to bet towards the mean. So taking an under on a low number can feel kind of weird, but I do want to take an under here. And that under is on Patrick Corbin facing off with the Los Angeles Angels. The strikeout prop uh, for Corbin is plus 118 on under three and a half. And I do want that under on Corbin here. This number has been inching up a bit. So it does seem like there are some interest in the over on Corbin. So if you open things up and see that it's, you know, it's lengthened a bit more. That's the way the market has moved. Uh, if it's still a 118, I'd probably take it there because it seems like the market may have leveled off at that point. But with Corbin, looking at the first two starts, it does seem like it might be even a little tiny bit more concerning than it was for him last year. I've got Corbin projected for 3.15 strikeouts. Very low number. It's tough to, to get down there, especially because I do expect him to have a pretty full pitch count. He's leaning heavily on his slider this year, but even in the two starts, his strikeout rate is 13%. Now his swinging strike rate is better. So I don't expect his strikeout rate to stay low down at 13%. The strikeout rate should increase as things go along. But both of those starts came at home, which is a plus. And now he goes on the road to face the Los Angeles Angels. Now the Angels are a team that will whiff. They definitely will do that as an offense, but... They also have a 128 WRC plus against lefties on their current active roster since the start of last year and a, and a 208 ISO. They are now among the best lefty hitting teams in baseball. Maybe they might be the best, honestly. And I know that's not the perception of the Angels, but when you add um, add on Hunter Renfro, add in Brandon Drury, guys who can take lefties deep, that's what's going to happen. So... We do get a, a situation where the strikeout rate is not low for the Angels. It's 21%. That's that's below average, but it's not like low, low. They do they will strike out, but I think that there's enough power bats in this lineup where we could see Corbin get chased pretty quickly. So that's a path to an under. He could just, you know, similar to the first two games, not hit the over. Uh, he went six innings in his second start and didn't get the over there. I think there are a couple paths to an under here. So at plus 118, I think that's pretty good value. So again, 3.15 projected strikeouts for me for Corbin for tonight. Under three and a half is plus 118. I think that's a pretty good bet. So Patrick Corbin under three and a half at plus 118, the first bet for me for today. The second bet is an over, and it's also kind of scary. That one, the Corbin one is scary because it's an under on uh, a low number. The second one is scary is because it's an over at Coors Field. But I do think that there is decent value here. That over is uh, four and a half at plus 102 for Steven Matz. Matz is at Coors Field taking on the Colorado Rockies for today. And the reasons why Coors is scary are twofold. It's not just because a guy can get chased early, get knocked around, and have to leave the game because he lets up a lot of runs. That's one route for sure. And that is a legitimate scare for Coors Field, especially with the total at 11 and a half for today. That's one route, but... It's also, it's a park where the elevation changes the way pitches move and that can throw pitchers for a loop. They may not be used to that kind of movement on their pitches and it may lead to uh, control issues, could lead to just decreased whiff rates and stuff like that. So you do see guys get their strikeout rate reduced when they go to Coors Field versus what they do elsewhere for a lot of times at least. And Matt's has not pitched at Coors Field since 2019. So... He's not used to this environment. It messes with the repertoire and he could let up a lot of runs, a lot of passing under there. But I also think Matt's is just good. Uh, he had seven strikeouts in his first start this year with a 13.8% swinging strike rate. And that came against a very good Atlanta Braves offense, an offense that can hurt lefties in a pretty big way. And they did get to Matt's eventually. He let up a good number of runs in that game, but the strikeouts were there. And I don't think that should be a surprise because last year before his injury, Matt's was popping seven or so strikeouts per game on a pretty regular basis. So it's not a shock to see Matt's getting strikeouts in the situation. He is fully stretched out. Matt's went 94 pitches in that first start against the Braves, 
So there is definite risk here. Talk about paths to an under for Corbin. There are paths to an under for Mats as well, but I think his baseline is better than this number entails. I think that the risk, the downsides, the paths are accounted for in this number. So I do want to take the over here. The over on Mats uh, at four and a half is plus one or two at FanDuel Sportsbook. Again, I think that's a good number. So Steven Matz over four and a half plus 102. Patrick Corbin under three and a half plus 118. The two strikeout power ops where I'm showing value for today. I think those are the two I want to settle on personally. There are some home run props that I like as well. One of them is actually in this game. So let's take here and talk about that one first. Now, I'm going to talk about this home run prop based on the odds of FanDuel. I will say you can get a much better number elsewhere. So it's always a good word of caution. Make sure you shop around. The guy I like is Brendan Donovan. He is plus 630 at FanDuel Sportsbook. You can get him as long as plus 950 elsewhere. I would take that. I would recommend that. That is a very good number. Uh, Donovan is a guy who, coming into this year, there were some rumblings that he may have had a, a swing change. And he said, no, it's not a swing change. I'm trying to be more efficient with my swings, which sounds like a swing change. But um, either way, in the spring, we saw him hit for a decent amount of power. And it's okay to be skeptical of that because spring training numbers can be very fluky. But if you look at the stickiest numbers from spring, it's strikeouts and isolated slugging. And I do put weight in those things for spring training numbers to see if there have been changes, if because, you know, I, I want to get that. The reason they, they stabilize more quickly is because they are numbers that stabilize quickly. Strikeout rate stabilizes around like 50 to 60 plate appearances. Isolated slugging is higher, around 80 or so, I believe. but You know, it's not going to stabilize across spring, but you can get indications directionally of who may have improved. And Donovan was one of those guys. So good power in the spring. He has two home runs so far, which is not a big number, but he has four barrels. I think he had 13 all of last year. Uh, His barrel rate this year is 16.7%. Last year was 3.4%. So it does seem like there has been a tangible shift there. So with Donovan, you're getting a guy who's probably going to hit pretty high in the order at Coors Field with a swing change that has led to some power that the books may not be accounting for just yet. You can get him as long as plus 950 if you're willing to look for the best price on him. He's facing Herman Marquez. I think Marquez is a pretty good pitcher personally, but he's also not the ace you need to be to shut down guys at Coors Field. We also do see Marquez let up more fly balls to lefties, and Donovan is that. So I think that looking at Coors Field, I wasn't expecting to see a lot of value here for today because I respect Mats and I respect Marquez, but opening up the module, seeing Donovan at plus 630 at FanDuel, and then looking around and finding him at plus 950 elsewhere, that changed my mind real fast. So I do think Donovan uh, at the best number you can get is going to be a good home run call for today based on the swing change, based on Marquez and based on those factors all combining to make him a good value at plus 630 or longer. Other home run prop I've got for today is going back to that uh, Nationals and Angels game. We're talking about Patrick Corbin earlier on. It's actually a guy facing Patrick Corbin. Now with this one, it partly depends on house rules because at FanDuel and I, I think in most places, if a batter makes a plate appearance or appears in a game, all action stands. So for this player, he's a catcher, Logan O'Hop. I would want to wait until lineups come out and I confirm O'Hop is in there because a lot of times catchers just don't play. So A, always know your sportsbook house rules so you can know how to navigate these things. At FanDuel, if O'Hop doesn't start but winds up playing later on, the bets will stand, which is why I want to wait to make sure he's in the lineup first. You don't typically see odds crash on guys once they're in the lineup because it's generally kind of assumed they'll be in there. So plus 680 is a hops home run prop facing off with Corbin for today. Corbin is a big part of this. A lot of hard contact in his first couple of starts this year, but a is also a big fact too, because last year at double a, uh, both the Phillies and the angels, he made about 50 plate appearances. He had 20 some runs. So it's really good numbers, but it's double A. The question is, will that translate to the majors? And so far this year, a 15.8% barrel rate for O'Hop. He has a 47% hard hit rate. Now he gets to face a lefty. I think that O'Hop is a guy who's probably pretty legit. Young guy, showed power in the minors last year, has shown power in a small sample this year, was pretty good this spring during a spot on the roster. So 
I'm not super skeptical of him. Obviously, there are other power guys in this lineup. Uh, Taylor Ward is not a power guy, but plus 520, not a bad number on him. I don't mind Brandon Drury at 440. Renfro, 340, that's probably a bit too short for me. But like, there are other options you could go with on this Angels team. Let's say, you know, Hop's not in the lineup. You can still potentially get exposure elsewhere. But plus 680 to me, a really good number. He's not the 950 you can find elsewhere. You can find on um brendan donovan he's seven to one is what i was able to find but uh still logan oha plus 680 a good guy for tonight against corbin so again i would hold off until the lineup is out for the angels to make sure hop is in there because catchers sometimes do not play their playing time a bit harder to predict but if a hop does wind up in there plus 680 to me a very fine number so MLB for today, no money lines I like and want to take, but uh, the strikeout props, Corbin under three and a half strikeouts at plus 118. That is in the Angels Nationals game. Uh, got Mats over four and a half at plus 102 at Coors Field. Uh, Logan O'Hop plus 680 in that Nationals Angels game to home run. And then Brandon Donovan plus 630. But again, shop around on that one to find the best number you can get uh, at the Coors Field game against Herman Marquez, again, uh, plus 630 or up to plus 950 for him there. We'll see how that goes for MLB for today, but things have gone well so far for the model this year and feeling pretty good about those four specifically. Before we wrap up for today, though, got to go back to last week and recap uh, the show here as we do each and every week for the week-to-week things. Harder to recap the daily stuff, uh, but week-to-week stuff we do want to recap so you can know if what we're saying passes the sniff test, and if you want to follow the recommendations we are giving. Luckily for us, the recommendations were good last week. Let's start things off with the Masters. We had Brandon Gadula on at Gadula 13 to talk the Masters, and Brandon hit himself a winner. He said he had value on John Rahm at plus 950 to win, and Rahm did it by four strokes, no less. Of course, didn't go into Sunday leading, but uh, he was two to one live, and Data Golf had him at about 37%, I think, to win at that point. So I took him two to one live, did not get the plus 950 personally, but I'll take a two to one winner there. And with Brandon being in the show, it's been a running joke where he will hit a winner, a winner, an outright bet the week after he's on covering the spread. It's happened three or four times at this point. So Kudos to him to get the scheduling gods to align there uh, and to hit John Rahm at plus 950. Other outrights Brandon liked were Tony Finau, 24 to 1, Patrick Cantley at 19, and Xander Schauffele at 25 to 1. Um, so didn't matter since Rahm hit there. The non outrights uh, were some hits and some misses there. Hopefully, hitting Rahm helps make up for that. The two, uh, two of them were on Roy McElroy, who, of course, did not make the cuts. Uh, they were the top Irish player and the top guy. From Great Britain and Ireland. Missed the cut. Uh, came close. Brandon did with Victor Hovland for a couple different markets. He had Hovland as a top continental European player and in a group bet. The problem is that John Rahm is also from continental Europe. So he won that one. For the group bet, it was Hovland versus Sam Burns, Hideki Matsuyama, and Brooks Kapka. He beat Burns and Matsuyama, but Brooks Kapka was fantastic the entire weekend. Finished in a tie for second. So... Hard to top that, but Hovland did play really well, came close on both, had a shot on Sunday, started the, the round of third, but couldn't quite get the job done. Brandon Scotty Scheffler as a top former winner at plus 155, but Green Jacket owners did great on Sunday. Uh, you got Phil Mickelson in the top 10 or up there, Jordan Spieth, Patrick Reed, all finished very well. Uh, Scheffler was plus 155, did finish top 10 himself, but couldn't quite get that one there. Uh, Brandon did hit a top 20. That was Joaquin Neiman at, at plus 210. Mito Pereira was the other, I believe, at plus 230 or so. Neiman wasn't a tie for 20th, so not the full plus 210, but a profit there regardless. So uh, good call on Neiman by Brandon. Good call on Rob. And hopefully a good week for all of you listening out there. Again, find Brandon on Twitter. I could do with 13. Check out his work over at numberfire.com where he has full simulations of these events. And hopefully you can find some value on Rom once again. For UFC 287, we had Austin Swaim on last week. Find Austin on Twitter at aswain 3 Money lines there went one and two on the night. The hit was on uh, was on Rob Font at plus 152. Alex Pereira at plus 116. And Chris Curtis at plus 108. Couldn't quite get the job done, uh, but Font did hit. The props for Austin, one and one. The hit was Kevin Holland. Uh, that fight over two and a half rounds. Uh, that was plus one weight. That one ended in, in the third round. So uh, the overhit there, a plus one weight for Austin. Other one was Gerald Mearshart by submission at plus 360. Joe Pfeiffer won that event outright. So 
mixed one there, uh, but Austin doing a good job so far. And uh, I did get the font one myself. So I was happy about that for sure. And getting the winner there two or uh, two and three overall for Austin there with a couple plus money wins in the bag. As far as NASCAR goes, good week. Pretty happy with how things went. In the truck race, it depends on how you played it. Because when we talked about it, I said the firm recommendations were William Byron to win at 7-1, Grant Enfinger top 5 at plus 275, and Parker Kligerman top 5 at plus 350. Enfinger, Enfinger finished 5th, so that went cash. That's good to go. I said I had value on Joey Logano at 5-1, to one and had that in myself, but... I said I preferred Byron between the two and said, hey, if Logano's fast in, in practice, then I'd be okay betting him as well. But there was no practice because it got rained out on Friday. So the Logano one does not count for the podcast. Uh, the end finger top five does. Uh, Byron finished third, finished really well, ran well. Kligerman had some issues, so he did not finish the race, I don't believe. But so you get the end finger cash. Hopefully you overruled me on going with Byron over Logano and bet him. I had Logano myself, so that worked out for me, but hopefully you didn't listen to my recommendation of Byron over Logano. Either way, a profit if you followed all three, but hopefully you got Logano in there as well. For the Cup Series race, um, I had Christopher Bell to win at plus 650. That was over in the write-up over on Number Fire, not here on the show, which is why I'd recommend checking out uh, the betting guide over on Number Fire because I'll add bets there after practice that I can't do to the show. On the show, had a couple of top 10 bets. Those were Ty Gibbs at plus 380, Eric Jones at 10 to 1. And when the race, when the, the checkered flag flew, there was a caution on the track. And so they freeze the field the last loop and they, you know, sort out the finishing order. And at the time, I thought that Ty Gibbs finished 11th. He was 11th. Eric Jones is 14th. So I thought I missed on both. Came close on both. Couldn't quite it either. Jones is down like three laps for a lot of that race, uh, but got his way back, worked his way back up there. And Gibbs was 17th on the final restart, worked his way forward. I saw when he was in 12th, passed another guy, thought he's going to finish 11th. But then NASCAR changed the order. They went back and reviewed the video and saw at the time of caution, Ty Gibbs is actually head of Michael McDowell. So Gibbs at plus 380 cashed. I know there was a snafu where they paid out uh, McDowell top 10 bets, that's a bummer. It does follow, follow house rules. So again, it's always important to be familiar with house rules. They followed the rules there that were set forth. So it's a bummer if you had McDowell and I, I feel sorry about that, but it is the house rules. So make sure you're aware of the house rules and stuff like that. But I would, I benefited with the, the Ty Gibbs top 10. So uh, no complaints from me. Uh, so the Gibbs top 10 at plus 380 cash, the Jones top 10 at 10 to one did not cash finish 14th, but overall, Really fun week here on the show between golf, between NASCAR, UFC, fun week, and hopefully we can duplicate that once again this week here on the show. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. As mentioned, we are back once again tomorrow. We'll talk about some NBA play-in games, get you ready for that tournament, and talk about best ways you can bet that over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Do not forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you hear, give us a thumbs up on YouTube. And make sure you're subscribed to the FanDuel YouTube page for this plus uh, Up and Adams, Run It Back, everything all over here on the FanDuel YouTube page. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in here today. Good luck to you with your bets across Monday in Major League Baseball. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down some NBA. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 